Chapter 10 Harmony in Nature Understanding the Interconnectedness, Self-Regulation and Mutual Fulfillment Recap We began our exploration with the basic human aspiration and the program for fulfillment of this desire. We saw that the basic human desire is for happiness, prosperity and its continuity. We explored our natural acceptance and we came to understand that the meaning of happiness is to be in a state of harmony. Therefore, in order to ensure the continuity of happiness or harmony, we need to understand the harmony not only within us but also at all levels of our being, the individual, the family, the society and nature and existence. Once we understand this harmony, we can live in harmony at all these four levels. So far we have been able to explore the harmony of the first three. Harmony in human being, harmony in family and harmony in society. We have been cut. We have seen that our natural acceptance. We have seen that our natural acceptance is for living in harmony as an individual in a family and in society. Now the question is, is it possible to live in harmony at these three levels? Of course, there is a desire for it, we have the natural acceptance for it, but is it possible? Does natural nature provide such an opportunity, such a possibility? In other words, is there provision in nature, in existence, for living in accordance with our natural acceptance? Is it possible to live in harmony as an individual, as a family, as a society, in nature and ultimately in the whole existence? What do you feel? Is interconnectedness, harmony and mutual fulfillment inherent in nature? Or is the design of nature existence by way of opposition, struggle and survival of the fittest? If nature and existence is in the form of interconnectedness and mutual fulfillment, only then it will be possible for us to live in harmony at all levels of human being. Cut. If nature and existence is in the form of interconnectedness and mutual fulfillment, only then it will be possible for us to live in harmony at all levels of human living. On the other hand, if nature is by way of opposition, by struggle, we are bound to face opposition and struggle. In this chapter, we will explore the basic underlying design of nature. We will explore to see whether it is harmony or disharmony, order or chaos. Nature as collection of units. When you hear the word nature, perhaps you think of mountains and forests, oceans and plains. Nature is the collection of all the units, the air, soil, water, plants, trees, animals, birds, other human beings and even things that are a little distant from us like the sun, the moon, the other planets etc. When we look around, we see all kinds of units. For example, in a classroom, there may be units like chairs, tables, copies, pens, blackboard, projector, laptop, etc. Outside the classroom, in a garden or forest, we may see other kinds of units like trees, shrubs, butterflies, flies, birds, animals, pond, stones, etc. If we look further, we see the sun, moon, stars, the earth itself. All of these are units. Some units like atoms and molecules are very small in size. So small that we cannot even see them with our eyes. On the other hand, some units are very large. Our earth is a large unit. It has a mass of 5.97 into 10 to the power of 24 kilograms 
and a diameter of around 12,700 kilometers. The Sun is a very large unit. Its mass is approximately 3,30,000 times more than that of the Earth. Many of the stars that we see in the sky at night are much larger than the Sun. All of these units, whether small or large, collectively are called nature. See figure 10.1. Each unit exists as an individual entity. It occupies a certain volume and has a definite shape and size. Units can be counted 1, 2 or so on. However, there are a very large number of units that comprise nature. Classification of units into four orders. Although the units are innumerable, cut. Although the units are innumerable, they can all be classified into just four groups or four orders. Physical order. This includes units like air, water, metal and so on. To bio order. This includes grass, plants, trees, etc. 3. Animal order. This includes animals and birds. 4. Human order. This includes human being. It is relevant to classify the units based on their common intrinsic properties. These innumerable units can all be classified into just four definite orders. This is a very important point because if we can understand the basic properties of each of these four orders, we can understand the properties of all the units in nature. Similarly, if we can understand the interaction between few units of each order, we can understand the interconnectedness amongst all the units. This is what we intend to do. Interconnectedness and mutual fulfillment among the four orders. We have explored the cyclic and mutually fulfilling process in nature while discussing production work in the chapter on society. That was from the point of view of articulating a nature-friendly production process. While the content is almost the same here, the focus is on understanding the inherent interconnectedness and mutual fulfillment amongst the four orders. We have restated these descriptions accordingly in the next few pages for completeness. Refer to figure 10.2. As we had discussed in chapter 9, the units of the physical order like soil, water and air provides the uh, basic material for plants to develop, survive and grow. Wherever the soil is fertile and there is sufficient water available, seeds germinate and plants grow. In this way, the units of the physical order nourish the units of the bio order. Similarly, when the leaves, uh, flowers, and fruits of plants fall to the ground and degenerate, they get converted into soil. These plant residues are manure for the soil, making it more fertile. Plants also help in maintaining the level of oxygen in the air, participating in the water cycle on the earth and so on. In this way, units of the bio order fulfill units of the physical order. We can also see that the soil gets converted into plants and the plants get converted back into soil. Uh, from this, two observations can be made. One, the process is cyclic. The soil is getting converted into plants and plants are getting converted back into soil. Two, the process is mutually enriching and mutually fulfilling. In the process, the plants are getting enriched by the soil and the soil is also getting enriched by the plants. This 
soil plant interaction is a is an example of the interconnectedness and relationship of mutual fulfillment between the physical order and the bio order try to observe other such situations other such interactions between these two orders now if we observe the animal order along with the bio order and the physical order see figure 103 we can observe the interconnectedness and interrelationship among these three orders animals and birds units of the animal order depend on the plants units of the bio order for their food for example a cow a unit of animal order eats grass unit of bio order as its food in turn the cow is also fulfilling for plants animals and birds help to spread the seeds of plants from one place to the other they protect uh, plants from uh, harmful insects and pests similarly the unit of the physical order like the air water are essential for animals to survive in turn animals en enrich the soil uh, their dung and their dead bodies act as very good manure which makes the soil fertile in a forest we can observe that these three orders exist together soil ponds rivers air rocks and metals the unit of the physical order variety of such lush green shrubs trees and plants and trees the units of the bio order as well as different type of healthy animals and birds the units of the animal order they are together they are interconnected and interdependent and interconnected they are related to each other in a mutually fulfilling manner they enrich and fulfill each other that is how a forest is it is interesting to note that this process has been working going on in the forest without any human involvement you can see that we don't have to do anything from the outside for all these orders to enrich each other the supply of manure or irrigation is not required in a forest it all happens on its own that is the way nature is in fact as time passes the soil becomes more fertile the water is stored and becomes available throughout the year various types of timber fruits and flowers keep growing and the diversity of plants animals and birds keep enriching this is a phenomenon in nature that happens by the design of nature itself what about the relationship of the human being in with the rest of nature now if you if we place the human being in the picture see figure 104 we can see that all these three orders are enriching for the human being the physical order the bio order and the animal order all enrich the human order the air that we breathe the water that we drink the house in which we live all these are units of the physical order which are required for the survival of the body the equipment and instruments we use like mobile phones laptops projectors radio television cards trains and planes all of these are generally made from the physical order we get a variety of farm produce like uh, fruits vegetables grains uh, flowers etc from shrubs plants and trees which are in the unit which are the units of the bio order the bulk of the food that we uh, that nourishes our bodies is obtained from the bio order in fact our requirement of food is so high that a large part of the available land is used only for cultivation 
we get milk wool etc from animals since the early days bullocks are of help to cultivate land while horses and donkeys carry luggage and transport materials from one place to the other you must have been uh, you must have seen bullock carts and tongas carriages uh, being drawn by animals in the days when there were no post offices and no internet uh, so no emails in those days our uh, human beings used pigeons as messengers to and from in distant lands uh, exchanging messages uh, with each other dogs known for their loyalty are kept in our homes for safety uh, these days dogs are also used by uh, by police and the army to help in detection of crimes in all these ways animals and birds are fulfilling for the human being you can find various such examples in our daily lives where all these three orders are fulfilling for the human being thus we can see that all the three orders are enriching for the human being now is the human being fulfilling for the other orders which is a big question human being is not only unfull unfulfilling for the other three orders rather it is dominating and exploiting them to a, to the extent of global warming and climate change some of the indicators of human activity that is disturbing the harmony in nature are one atmospheric co2 levels that are stable at 250 to 350 uh, ppm in the last few thousand years has increased tremendously in the last 100 years two the drying up uh, rivers lakes and underground aquifers third rapidly melting of polar and glacial ice and potential rise and potential rising of sea levels fourth depletion of forest covers fifth farmland being taken up by human habitation or industrialization sixth rapid species loss and sharp reduction in biodiversity however when we refer to our national acceptance we want to fulfill all the four orders ask yourself this question what is naturally acceptable to you to enrich these four orders or to exploit them the answer is obvious to enrich all the four orders when we have the feeling of exploitation of any of the four orders these feelings itself is not naturally acceptable to us and therefore it leads to a state of contradiction within thus a state of unhappiness within whenever there is a feeling a thought of exploitation there is unhappiness in spite of obtaining huge amounts of physical facility and happiness persists and it keeps nagging the human being that something is wrong if we become aware of it the unhappiness is just an indicator of disharmony and can point towards need to understand and then to live in harmony that is happiness while studying harmony in the in the human being we saw that the recognition and fulfillment of the human being depends on depends upon knowing and assuming in the absence of knowing when human beings are living based only on assumptions they may or may not be able to ensure fulfillment in their behavior and a work at a work all the time though human beings have the natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment in the absence of right understanding this mutual fulfillment is not ensured once human beings understand the mutual fulfillment amongst the four orders they are fulfilling for the rest of nature as well as for the other human beings when we live accordingly the question marks in the relationship with the three orders would be converted into tick marks and then 
this is what the picture would look like in figure like in the figure 10 5 it is a picture of harmony in nature with the human order while living in accordance with its natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment by its very design nature is in harmony interconnectedness relatedness and mutual fulfillment is inherent rather than struggle survival of the fittest opposition or chaos it is already materialized in three with the first three orders the human being also has the natural acceptance for mutual fulfillment there is all the provision in nature for us human beings to live in harmony and ensure mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature all that we need to do is to understand this harmony in nature and live in harmony self-regulation in nature there is self-regulation in nature it does not need to be regulated by human being to be in harmony with right understanding human beings will also be self-organized in harmony within and participate in the harmony in the larger order even now we can observe that what that water evaporates from the sea clouds form they are dispersed far and wide over the surface of the earth there is rain streams o uh, overground uh, rivers underground aquifers all participating in a water cycle years after years definite seasons can be observed the distribution of water can be observed does it need any human intervention we can see this cycle and mutual enriching process is self-regulated by way of nature in a forest the proportion of soil plants and the animals of various species is self-regulated it never happens that the lions eat up all the deers or the deers eat up all the grasses or the that the plants grow to the extent that there is no space for the deers or that there is a lack of soil for new plants and so on the temperature of the human body remains at 37 degrees centigrade that is 98.4 degrees fahrenheit even though people may be living with ambient temperature uh, varying widely, sometimes as much as plus 45 degrees centigrade to 10 degrees centigrade, it is by the way of the self-regulation in nature. There are many examples one can take. The earth remains, earth maintains a range of temperature naturally the gender ratio in human beings is nearly constant at, a, at approximately one is to one male is to female birds eggs hatch just just when the caterpillars are in abundance and so on with right understanding the human beings can be the most fulfilling units in nature we can take a few examples we can use solar power and plant-based fuels in place of petroleum and coal there are many efforts in this direction now in chapter 9 we had mentioned that wood from four full-grown trees can suffice for fulfilling all the needs of one human being in terms of wood there are many examples of single individuals regenerating entire forests each of us can plant more many more than four trees in a lifetime isn't it by maintaining adequate forest and grassland we can ensure a conducive environment for the birds and animals also 
Like that, we can play the role of being fulfilling for all orders. For that, we have to understand nature, understand the four orders, which is what we intend to do next. Understanding the four orders. We can now look at the basic identifications and properties of each of the four orders based on which the units have been classified. In figure 10.6, we can see the details of the four orders. Few examples of units in that order, their activity, their inherent innateness, their natural characteristics and the basis of their patterns of inheritance are shown. Activity in the four orders. Each order is characterized by certain activities. The units of the physical order are characterized by the activity of formation and deformation. For example, if a piece of iron is left exposed to the air, you may notice that after a period of time, it gets rusted. What is happening here? The iron gets converted into iron oxide in the presence of oxygen and moisture. Thus, iron oxide was formed and iron, oxide, iron oxygen and water were deformed. To take another example, when hydrogen and oxygen combine together at a certain temperature and pressure, water is produced. In this case, there is formation of water and deformation of hydrogen and oxygen. Through the activities of formation and deformation, one unit of the physical order gets converted into another unit of the physical order. In the bio order, in addition to formation and deformation, the activity of respiration is also taking place. In a plant, for example, the activities of formation and deformation keeps happening. Many chemical reactions keep taking place, leading to various changes. New molecules and cells are formed, while others are degenerated. Along with this, plants also exhibit the activity of respiration. In the process of respiration, something is inhaled, taken in by the plant, and something is exhaled, that is taken out or released by the plant. It would be difficult to find a single plant that does not have the activity of respiration. At the same time, it would be difficult to find a single piece of iron or any unit of the physical order that exhibits the activity of respiration. The bio order is characterized by the activity of respiration. The activity of formation and deformation is taking place in both physical order and the bio order but the activity of respiration is specific to the bio order as compared to physical order. The animal order is a coexistence of the self and the body. What is the indication of the presence of the self in animals or birds? While discussing the human being as a being of coexistence of self and body, we saw that the response of a body is only in terms of recognizing and fulfilling, whereas the response of the self is in terms of at least assuming, recognizing and fulfilling. The activity of assuming is the basic indication that a self is associated with that body. The response changes with a change in its assumption. For example, if you purchase a dog from the market and provide him necessary food and shelter for a few days, it starts distinguishing between you and other people. When you enter the house, it starts wagging its tail, but when someone else comes, it's, it may start barking. What has happened here? The assumption of the dog about you has changed within the few days that you have been providing food for it. It now recognizes you as a friend, while others are assumed to be strangers. The change in response has happened because of a change in assumption. The assumption is an indicator of the presence of the self. 
Such a change in response due to the change in assumption is not observed in plants. Since a unit of the animal order is a coexistence of the self and the body, therefore to study animal order we need to study the self as well as the body. This is important to note. The body of an animal is basically a unit of the bio order. When we look at the activities of the body, we can observe the activities of respiration along with the formation and deformation, just like the activities in a plant, which is a unit of the bio order. The formation and deformation of various molecules keeps happening in the cells of the animal body. The animal body also takes in air that is rich in oxygen and exhales air that has a high content of carbon dioxide. Activities of formation, deformation and respiration are going on in the body of an animal. The activity of selecting and tasting is prominent in the self associated with an animal body. Animals select specific food and shelter that are conducive to their body. If you observe a cow, we can see that it eats only those varieties of grasses which are nurturing for its body. Since the cow is herbivorous, it does not select meat. Similarly, if you provide food to a cow, it comes to you, but if you beat it with a stick, it moves away from you. We can see that a lion, being a carnivorous animal, selects fresh meat or flesh which is nurturing for its body. The recognition of what to eat is based on taste and these selections are essentially to keep the body in good health. Now let us talk about the human being, a unit of the human order. The human being is the coexistence of self and body. The human body also is a unit of the bio order. Therefore, it has the activities of formation, deformation and respiration. Many cells are being formed every day in our body. A wide range of proteins and hormones are continuously being formed in the body and of course, this process also involves the deformation of several other compounds. Every cell is taking something in and releasing something out. There is respiration taking place. This can also be seen at the level of organs and at the level of the whole body. When it comes to the self associated with the human body, the activities of imaging, comparing, analyzing, tasting and selecting can be observed. The activity of selecting here is not only to keep the body in good health, but more than that for happiness. We have earlier discussed that this need for happiness is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling and not by physical facility. The innate need to know can be observed in any child. It asks so many questions about all sorts of things. Human being also has the potential to know, potential for right understanding and right feeling potential for continuous happiness. That is why we have been saying that for human being right understanding is the highest priority followed by relationship and the third priority is physical facility. Of course all these three are required. Right understanding basically means awakening to the activities of realization of existence as being coexistence, of understanding, of the harmony in nature and of contemplation of relationship or one's participation in the larger order. This need to know and the potential to know is the core differentiating factor between human being and animal at the level of self. In this way, all the four orders can be distinguished in terms of their activities. This is one way in which the units of nature can be classified. Innateness of the four orders. The third column describes the innateness of each order. Innateness is the definite 
self organization of a unit by virtue of its definite self organization the unit exhibits a definite conduct or property a unit and its innateness are inseparable each order has a definite innateness which is the distinguishing property of that order in other words every unit is bound to have the innateness specific to the order that it belongs to the innateness of the physical order is existence this means that it exists exists in a definite order it is a reality and has a definite order it exists and continues to exist at most it is converted into another unit of the physical or bio order but it does not get destroyed every unit of the physical order has this innateness it exists in a definite order with a definite conduct for example a piece of iron is a unit of the physical order it remains as a piece of iron unless it gets converted into something else by way of formation and deformation the activity that characterizes the physical order even after the formation deformation every atom continues to exist thus if we have 1 kg of iron over the years it will remain 1 kg if it is protected properly from rusting it will have the definite conduct of iron and continue to exhibit this conduct unless some formation deformation takes place now let us see the innateness of units of the bio order a plant has the innateness that is self organization of existence as well as growth thus a plant exists as a plant and it also grows a mango tree that is 1 kg now may become 10 kg after 1 year it will continue to be a mango tree and it will grow any unit of the bio order like a plant a tree an animal body and a human body all of them exhibit their innateness to exist and to grow when we look at the animal order we can observe the self and the body separately because a unit of the animal order is the coexistence of both self and body the animal body has the innateness of existence and growth just like plants and trees the self of the animal has an innate will to live so the self of every animal and bird every unit of the animal order has a will to live it wants to live that is its innateness we can observe that animals and birds nurture and protect their body they search for food that is conducive for their body they try to find a conducive environment to live they make all effort to fulfill their will to live they move away from other animals birds and even people where their will to live is in jeopardy now coming to the human order the human being is also a coexistence of self and body at the level of the body a unit of the bio order the innateness is existence and growth the human body takes birth grows passes through various stages from childhood adolescence adulthood becomes old and dies this is similar to any animal body or a plant at the level of self however the human being has a will to live with continuous happiness this is the innateness the self organization at the level of the self of the human being the will to live with continuous happiness is an integral part of the self of the human being and cannot be separated from it as we have seen the need for continuous happiness is fulfilled by right understanding and right feeling so the innateness of the human order may be restated as the will to live 
with right understanding and right feeling in the self. Natural characteristic of the four orders. Natural characteristic of a unit referred to its natural participation in the larger order. Larger order means a larger unit of which this unit is a part of. Larger order for the cells of your stomach may be the digestive system. The larger order for the digestive system would be the human body. The larger order for the human body may be the human being, the family and so on. Units exhibit their natural characteristic only when they are self-organized in accordance with their innateness, that is, when they are in harmony within. The natural characteristic of the physical order is composition decomposition. Units of the physical order participate with units of the physical order or any of the other orders by way of composition or decomposition. Both composition and decomposition involve the activity of formation and deformation. We had taken the example of iron rusting. In this example, iron atoms are deforming in the presence of air and moisture and forming molecules of ferric oxide. Iron is decomposing and ferric oxide is being composed. Of course, formation deformation is the activity by virtue of which new compositions are made and old compositions are decomposed. This is how units of the physical order interact with other units. The bio order participates with the bio order in terms of nurturing or worsening the other. It is easy to see that the apple fruit, a unit of the bio order, nurtures the human body, a unit of the bio order. The belladonna plant in sufficient quantity worsens the human body. The belladonna plant nurtures the body of a god. Like this, the unit of the bio order participate by nurturing or worsening other units of bio order. When it comes to the animal order, we have to see the natural characteristic of the both. The body of the animal as well as the self of the animal. The body is a unit of the bio order, so it participates like it is described above. It is in terms of nurturing or worsening other units of bio order. The self of the animal participates by way of cruelty or non cruelty with other units of animal order. Animals like lions, tigers, hyenas, etc., participate by way of cruelty. It means they fulfill their needs by eating the body of other animals. Animals like cows and sheep participate with non-cruelty. They fulfill their needs without force and violence. The natural characteristic of animal order is cruelty and non-cruelty. In the human order, the human being is the coexistence of self and body. The body belongs to the bio order and hence has the natural characteristics of the bio order. The natural characteristic of the self of the human being is perseverance, bravery, generosity, kindness, beneficence and compassion. As we observed earlier, a human being in harmony will exhibit this natural characteristic. That is, if a human being is living with human consciousness, it will exhibit this natural characteristic. However, a human being who is not having living in harmony is not living with human consciousness, will not be able to live by this natural characteristics. Rather, it may tend to live with the wretchedness, cunningness and cruelty which are its assumed characteristic. Basically, the assumption is that one can't fulfill their needs themselves, so they resort to beguiling others or to some form 
cruelty like domination, violence, etc. It may be noted that cruelty is a natural characteristic of animal order. It is not so for the human order. In fact, it becomes a serious problem in case of human order. For example, the world today is spending a large percentage of resources for destructive purposes. This is born out of the assumed feeling of cruelty. Inheritance of the four orders. Inheritance refers to the method by which the units ensure the continuity of their definite conduct generation after generation. Units of the physical order maintain their conduct by way of constitution. For example, a piece of iron will show the definite conduct of iron as long as its constitution remains unchanged. If however the constitution of the piece of iron is changed, its conduct will also change. For example, the addition of very minute amounts of carbon, nickel and chromium to the iron changes its constitution and the new material is called steel. The conducts of iron and steel are very different. The change in constitution has led to change in conduct. The conduct of the units of the physical order is based on their constitution as long as the constitution of the unit is maintained, its conduct is maintained. When it comes to the bio order, the continuity of the conduct is maintained by way of seed. As long as the seed is preserved, the conduct of the plant is preserved. Thus we can say that the inheritance of the bio order is seed based. If we plant a mango seed, it gives rise to a mango tree and the tree further gives rise to mango fruits and therefore mango seeds. The quality of the seed decides the conduct of the plant. Thus to preserve the mango tree, the mango seed needs to be preserved. As long as that happens, the conduct of the mango tree will be maintained across generations. The continuity of the conduct of a unit of the animal order is ensured by way of its breed. As long as the breed of an animal is preserved, its conduct is maintained. The calf of a cow is bound to be a cow and its conduct will be like that of a cow. It will eat grass. Similarly, the cub of a lion is bound to be a lion and it will eat flesh. This is how the tradition of various animals is maintained over many thousands of years. Thus the inheritance of the animal order is breed based. As long as its breed is preserved, its conduct is ensured. The definite conduct of animals is ensured as long as their breed is maintained. What about the human being, the human order? How is the conduct of a human being maintained? Is it based on the breed like animals? If the father is a vegetarian, will the child necessarily be vegetarian? If the mother is wise, will the child also be wise by default? Not necessarily. We can easily see many examples of children of unwise parents becoming wise and also vice versa. A child's parents may not have ever gone to school, but the child may go on to become an engineer, a doctor and so on. We can see that the body of the child has similar features as the parents. If the mother is tall and dark, the child may also be tall and dark. If the father has curly hair, the child may also have curly hair. The body of the child is based on the breed, but the conduct is not so. What decides the conduct of a human being if it is not based on the breed? This is what we can explore further. The conduct of a human being is ensured by way of education and sanskar. A human being given human education and sanskar will live with definite human conduct. On the other hand, inhuman education and sanskar gives rise to indefinite inhuman conduct 
we can conclude that the inheritance of the human order is education sanskar significance of education sanskar for human order with this clarity we can observe that units of physical bio and animal orders are maintaining their definite conduct they are already in harmony within and are exhibiting their natural characteristics it is only the human being who is in disharmony within that it has the in indefinite in human conduct it is not yet able to realize living with its natural characteristics in order to ensure the definite human conduct human education sanskar is required it is what was said that is what was said in the beginning of this book the role of education is to facilitate the transformation from animal consciousness to human consciousness and thereby developing the competence to live with definite human conduct so education human education and sanskar we can ensure right understanding in us this in turn will ensure the right feeling in us with right understanding and right feeling in the self we will be able to ensure the continuity of harmony and happiness in ourselves and live accordingly then we can be a source of human education sanskar for the next generation once this happens the cycle is complete e figure 107 once complete the cycle can then continue generation after generation this is what we essentially need to do we don't have to change anything in the first three orders as far as the first three orders are concerned they are already in harmony they already have definite conduct and are mutually fulfilling for each other and fulfilling for us it is only the fourth order that is us human beings who need to complete this process the human being as a society is yet to evolve and this evolution can take place through the process of human education sanskar this is the main purpose of this book firstly to draw the attention towards the need for right understanding and right feeling and then to help us acquire these through the process of self exploration self investigation once we have this right uh, understanding and right feeling in us in the self we will be able to ensure the continuity of happiness in ourselves we will become a source of human education and sanskar for others in this way human education can be transferred from one person to the other one generation to the next once the process is complete it can continue generation after generation making the human order also with a tradition of harmony and continuous happiness within that is living with its innateness and exhibit its natural characteristics in terms of living with with mutual fulfillment with human being as well as the rest of nature the the remaining three orders for this to happen this cycle has to start somewhere this book course is an effort to initiate this process of entering into this uh, cycle through the process of human education sanskar it is introduced with the hope that those who go through it sincerely and make the effort for the process of self exploration can ensure right understanding and right feeling in themselves they can be in a state of continuous happiness and then become a source of education sanskar for the next generation in this way the cycle can start expand complete and perpetuate ensuring the tradition of human conduct abundance in nature nature is organized in such a manner that the physical facility required for any order is available in abundance whatever is required for any order to exist is already available in abundance for that order for example the bio order is dependent on the physical order a plant requires soil water 
air, etc. That is physical order to grow. We can observe that first there is soil, moss is formed, grass appears followed by small plants, shrubs and then trees. We can easily see that more than enough soil, water and air are available for plants to exist and to thrive. The quantity of soil is far more than that of plants and trees. We can see that the quantity of the physical order is far more than the quantity of the bio order. That is how nature is organized. Similarly, animals and birds require both the physical order and the bio order to survive. They need air, water, food and shelter from these two orders. Both these orders together are available in far greater quantities in nature as compared to the quantity of animals and birds. There is no crisis or shortage of physical facility for any of the animals in the forest. Human beings require all these three orders to survive and the quantity of all these three orders together is far more than the quantity of human beings. By its very being, nature is organized in a manner where quantity of all four orders is in a sequence. That is physical order, it's much greater than bio order, which is much greater than animal order, which is much greater than human order. See figure 10.8. Therefore, the requirement of any order is already available in abundance. This is most clearly observable in a forest which is untouched by human being. The plants and trees as well as the animals and birds are thriving. The soil, the water, the streams and lakes the air and everything else in the forest is getting enriched. The biodiversity is increasing. Even the few carnivorous species of plants, animals and birds have a definite role in it to maintain the balance, to scavenge, etc. Vultures are an example. They eat the flesh of dead animals. In this act, they are converting the dead body back to soil. Otherwise, it will erode and create more problems. There is no garbage in the forest. There is a balance. No species is dominating the other. Rather, they are supporting each other. The bees make more than their requirement of honey and it is also available to bears without wiping out the bees. No species is actually getting extinct, but rather each is thriving. Of course, there are lean seasons and there are seasons of great abundance. Yet there is a definiteness about the availability of food, water, air, etc. For the smallest ant to the largest elephant. Try to find out if this seems like a struggle for survival and survival of the fittest or a well-balanced system in which every unit is complementing the other. It will give an assurance for the possibility of prosperity in human being. Dependence of the human being on the other three orders. Another important observation we can make from the description of the organization of nature given above is related to the dependence of an order over the others. One can see that the physical order can exist and sustain itself without any support from the other orders. The air, water, soil, etc. do not depend on the units of any other order for their existence. The units of the bio order, however, are dependent on the units of the physical order for their existence. Without the presence of the soil, air, water, 
the units of the bio order cannot survive and cannot maintain their continuity. The units of the animal order, besides being dependent on the air and water of the physical order for their survival, are also dependent on the bio order for their food. The human order is dependent on all of the other three orders for its existence and survival. It is primarily the higher order which is affected most if the lower order is disturbed. In that sense, ultimately, it is the human being that bears the brunt of this disturbance in the harmony in nature in terms of the effect on the body as well as unhappiness in the self. If the human being does not ensure a relationship of mutual fulfillment with the other three orders, the human being is certainly going to face the negative consequences. Due to the lack of right understanding, human beings have intervened with nature leading to a very negative impact on environmental conditions. If we pollute the air, water, then our basic survival on the earth itself will become doubtful. These days, many scientists are saying that the situation has become so critical that we will not be able to survive on this earth for more than a hundred years. Harmony is inherent in nature by its design. We do not have to create it. There is all provision for human being, which itself is a unit in nature, to live in harmony. All that we human beings need to do is to understand the harmony in nature that already exists and live in harmony by ensuring mutual fulfillment with other human beings as well as other orders. When human being starts living with definite human conduct, it will ensure mutual fulfillment with human being as well as other three orders. It will also result into manifestation of harmony in the entire nature because the rest of the three orders are already exhibiting definite conduct and ensuring a relationship of mutual fulfillment with other units. Mutually fulfilling interaction of human order in nature. With this background, we can, we can see the role of human being when interacting with other human beings as well as with the rest of nature. Since all the four orders of the nature have a definite innateness, self-organization, definite natural characteristics and definite inheritance, understanding the harmony in nature helps us to develop clarity about our participation in nature and how to go about fulfilling that participation, facilitate a conducive environment for the activities of all the four orders in nature, or at least not violate them, facilitate the innateness of all the four orders in nature, or at least not violate them, participate with our natural characteristics and facilitate the natural characteristics of all the four orders in nature, or at least not violate it. Then ensure the inheritance of all the four orders of nature, or at least not violate it. Thus, when human beings interact with the other units of the four orders of nature, our role is to facilitate their activities, innateness, natural characteristics, and inheritance, is, or at least not, at least be sure not to violate them. The natural characteristics would be the guide for human interaction with the other orders. For example, for food, we would select units of the bio order that have a natural characteristic of nurturing the human body. We will make right utilization of the physical order for structures like uh, homes, which need to exist for long duration. We will interact with animals, which are non-cruel as pets for carrying loads as, as per their capacity and so on. 
This participation is ensuring mutual fulfillment between the four orders has been summarized in the chart below. Order is human participation for mutual fulfillment. Physical order, facilitating the existence of units by ensuring a conducive environment and maintaining, ensuring its a constitution. By order, facilitating the unit's growth for ensuring a conducive environment and maintaining, ensuring its seed. For animal order, facilitating nurture, nurturing and caring of the animal body by ensuring physical facility and a suitable environment for its existence and growth. Facilitating the, the fulfillment of the will of the animal self to live. Facilitating the maintenance of its tradition by maintaining its breed. Human order. Facilitating nurturing and caring of the human body by ensuring physical facility and suitable environment for existence and growth. Facilitating the fulfillment of the will of the self to live with continuous happiness by providing human education sanskar for, to every individual and participating in developing, maintaining a undivided society and universal human order. The above chart provides the basic guidelines for our participation while interacting with other units of the four orders of nature. Certainly, the main steps have to be taken by the human beings only, since the rest of the three orders are maintaining themselves, maintaining their conduct, their innateness, their natural characteristics and inheritance, and even without, even without the support of the human being. If the human being can facilitate the other units, it is very fine. If not, at least it should not be violating them. Ultimately, a way of life that is fulfilling for all human beings as well as rest of nature is necessary. Of course, active participation of the human being can facilitate the natural processes going on in nature. It may even accelerate it. We can participate meaningfully with the rest of nature by making the land fertile, by planting trees of various varieties and nurturing them, by providing fodder and other necessary physical facility to animals. These are just some common examples. You may be able to identify many such activities that would be performed by human beings to facilitate the fulfillment of the rest of nature. For this, a consistent effort is needed through human education and sanskar to ensure that human being is living in human consciousness. In this sense, human beings have to play a very significant role with other human beings. As parents and as teachers, we need to provide the human education sanskar to the child. If we provide human education sanskar, it gives rise to human conduct in the child. And if we do not, it is likely to give rise to inhuman conduct. This is the major participation, the major role that a human beings need to play. You may like to reflect on this, think about it and See if it is possible for you to participate with these four orders in a mutually fulfilling manner or not. If yes, try to observe whether you, your participation at present facilitates the mutual fulfillment of all the four orders of nature or not. Natural outcome of the understanding. All the orders in nature have definite contact except the human order without the right understanding. In the human being, it is the conduct, the response of the self that is not definite, is varying. We discussed in chapter 6 in detail that the self, operating on the basis of assuming, 
without knowing is the source of indefiniteness, the problem and its solution is to ensure knowing. Our natural acceptance is to know, to be in harmony. With knowing, with under right understanding, human beings can also have definite contact with which he can ensure a relationship of mutual fulfillment with human being and with the remaining three orders. For this human education sanskar is required. This is the first and foremost thing to be done for human being. This has been reiterated several times from the beginning that the most important activity for a human being is to ensure human education and sanskar for every individual so as to ensure human consciousness and definite human connect. For providing such an education sanskar, active role needs to be played by parents, teachers and ultimately the entire society. This would ensure the definiteness of conduct for the whole of nature since the other three orders are anyway exhibiting definite conduct. With this definite conduct of all the four orders, there would be harmony and mutual fulfillment in nature. We have also explored earlier that this harmony is inherent in nature by its very design. We do not have to create it. There is all provision for the human being, which itself is a unit of nature, to live in harmony. All that we human beings need to is to understand this harmony in nature and live in harmony by ensuring mutual fulfillment with other human beings as well as the other orders of nature. My participation, that is value, in nature. Nature is the collection of units. These may be classified into four orders which are helpful in understanding the activity, innateness, that is self-organization, natural characteristic and inheritance of every unit. It provides us with a basic guideline for interacting with these. Thus, while interacting with any unit of nature, our participation or value is ensuring mutual fulfillment by way of its right utilization in accordance with its natural characteristics so that it can continue with its innateness and inheritance. Therefore, while interacting with the rest of nature, we have to ensure right utilization, enrichment and protection. It results into prosperity for human being and preservation, that is preservation and enrichment of the rest of nature. The first three orders are already in relationship of mutual fulfillment. First part of our participation is developing our capacity to live in accordance with our natural characteristic, which can happen when we are self-organized in accordance with our innateness through human education sanskar. With this preparation, we can ensure the second part of ensuring mutual fulfillment with the rest of nature. This is our participation or value vis-a-vis -vis nature.